What's up, wall fans, common sense, social media world, and of course, podcast consumers? Uh, welcome to episode 100 of Go Tell to the Wall podcast. I'm, of course, your favorite podcast host, the one and only Sean O'Rourke. We are starting extremely late tonight. I explained it a little bit on the teaser, had some crazy delays, uh, so we are much later than usual, but I wanted to make sure we got episode 100 in on time. Well, date time, not necessarily on time time. Uh, so apologies for being super late. Hey, Ron. Ryan, uh, and since we got a lot to get into, and it's episode 100, let's just get into it. Censors podcast consumers, welcome to episode 100 of Go Tell to the Wall podcast. Hence the extra long, all right at the beginning. That's right, it's episode 100 of Go Tell to the Wall podcast. If you don't know who I am, and maybe you're just finding this this podcast, I am your favorite podcast host, the one and only Sean Work. And we've got a banner episode for you tonight. Absolute madness. We have great stories to get into, and we're going to get into some vintage, vintage stories. Uh, from Go Tell to the Wall, stuff that we talked about at the very, 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 very beginning of Go Tell to the Wall podcast, which was almost three years ago. Almost three years ago. Uh, it, it's pretty crazy. And I've said this before, uh, but we actually do have more than 100 full episodes. <laughs> That's the funny thing is we, we, were, we were approaching this episode 100, uh, but because of all the, the holiday specials we've done and stuff, we actually hit episode 100 like nine, ten episodes ago. But because this is the officially, official, officially official, Official episode 100 of Go Tell to the Wall podcast. Uh, we're going to have some fun with it. Uh, and I've got some additional announcements that we're going to get into, if, if, especially if you're just now catching up with everything that's going on with this. Uh, so let's just get into it with our opening. Social plugs. You can keep up with us during episodes, after episodes, before episodes, whenever you'd like to. And you can do that in multiple locations. One of those would be Twitter. Head on over to Twitter and uh, follow our t- official Go Tell to the Wall podcast Twitter account, which is at Tell the Wall Pod. Uh, you can also follow my personal Twitter account, which is at Magic Muppet. Just follow both of those. This isn't the official Centibration yet, Matt. We're going to get into that. This is the Centibration preview. Uh, additionally, you can follow us on Facebook. We're currently live on Facebook right now. That's usually who, when you hear me interacting with people. Uh, if, if you only listen to audio, it's on Facebook. Uh, so head over to facebook.com slash go tell to the wall. Like our page. Check back often. That's going to keep you updated on all of the things. And of course, YouTube. We have our YouTube channel up. It's Going strong still. I was going to say up and running. It's been up and running for quite a while now. Uh, so head on over to YouTube. Search Go Tell to the Wall. Subscribe to our page. That's where you're going to find uh, all of the live feeds from all of our episodes as well as our beer reviews uh, and, and individual clips from episodes as, as well as additional videos that you're only going to find on YouTube. Uh, so make sure you subscribe and keep up to date on the YouTube. Uh, and of course, most importantly, all-encompassing of those things I just mentioned would be SeanO'RourkeLive.com. That's right, SeanO'RourkeLive.com uh, is going to give you links to all those things I just mentioned, as well as uh, our Patreon page, which is, which is extremely important uh, for those of you that want to support us financially. Uh, you can do so through the Patreon link on SeanO'RourkeLive.com. Uh, and you're also going to find blog posts, photos that you won't find anywhere else, all kinds of good stuff on there. So make sure, if, if you remember none of those things I just mentioned, Sean Work Live would be the most, most, most important one. Uh, so make sure that's where, where you're keeping up to date, bookmark it, check back often, uh, and, and keep up to date on everything. I think I said up to date like five times throughout that opening, but that's okay. I'm, I'm a little all over the place right now because we're starting so late. I'm drinking stronger beer. My kid was going a little crazy before I came into the studio, uh, but it's okay. We're we're gonna we're, we're gonna persist and get through this. Uh, and like I said, episode 100. But we will have our official centibration soon. That's right, Matt. Matt, uh, my good friend Matt, actually coined that term that we we're using uh, for the official celebration episode of of Go Tell It's the Wall podcast, which which we are going to celebrate episode 100. 
I wanted to keep everything on schedule uh, as it usually is on Thursdays. Uh, however, for the, the centibration, I wanted to be able to get everyone in here. Uh, Bridget and Chris are on-air producers as well as our wall supporters and anyone that has, has showed great support. Uh, or really, if you're just a, you're a fan of the podcast and, and know me personally, we can probably get you in on the centibration as well. Uh, so let me know. That's going to be coming out shortly. It's just a scheduling thing. Uh, I don't have an exact date yet. It's probably going to be in the next two weeks. It's not going to be – I pro it's going to be on a weekend. I promise you it's not going to be next weekend because I'm going back-to-back – uh, shows next weekend. I got Unwritten Law on Friday and then uh, Gnarly Town, big long festival on Saturday. So possibly the weekend after that, but it's going to all depend on scheduling and, and getting everyone into the studio for, for a true celebration of Hotel Sub Wall podcast. And, and not just celebrating me and the podcast, but celebrating everyone that has supported the podcast, uh, has helped it to grow. On that note, we actually, for the last episode, we actually did hit 20,000. That's the first time we've hit 20,000. Uh, we actually passed 20,000 in the first week of, of episode 99 posting, which is it's pretty good. It's nothing compared to, you know, some of the big podcasts out there, but we, we've been steadily growing for a few years now, and, and, and we're continuing to see that growth. And because of that, I want to celebrate everyone that has supported us, uh, everyone that works on the podcast, especially Chris and Bridget Hassong, who, who put time in uh, to actually get on the live feeds, give me feedback, help on the Facebook page, all those good things, uh, and, and as well as probably my wife and daughter, because my wife and daughter put up with this madness uh, constantly, and so we will, of course, include them in the, the centibration. So look forward to that announcement coming soon. You'll be able to tune in live. We will have it live. I think we're going to do, like, multiple cameras. We're, it, we're just going to kind of go off uh, and have some fun with it and reminisce a little bit, have some new stories, and, and, and introduce you uh, to some people that you might not have met. Although, if you go back and you catch up on the live feeds, a lot, like, uh, Bridget and Chris have both been on a podcast episode. You can find you of them. You can find photos of them on genreworklive.com. Uh, but still, just to, to get that familiarity uh, and, and make sure we're getting everybody in the studio and, and truly celebrating it. Because it's not just about me. It's, uh, it, it's about everyone that listens. It's about everyone that supports it. Uh, it's about everyone that keeps me in line, especially Bridget, who, who tends to be the one keeping me in line, uh, keeping us on the rails, despite the fact that we are very, very, very rarely on the rails at all. Uh, we're we're more, more often than not off the rails. Uh, so thank you to all of you out there. Um, and we're gonna, I'm going to continue giving some thank yous throughout episode 100. Uh, I mentioned in the teaser, and I think I mentioned it last week, uh, we have some small format changes. Just slight, slight changes. Uh, kind of renaming some segments. We're testing things out over the next couple episodes, so look forward to that. It, you're not going to notice much difference. It's it's really just helping to keep myself organized and, and conveying information out to all of you in, in a more productive way, I guess you could say. Uh, there, there you go. Now I'm rhyming and everything. I don't know what's going on with episode 100 here. Uh, so anyway, look look forward to that, and I'll kind of talk about them throughout the podcast, but throughout the episode, but it, it, it's going to be minimal things that you'll even notice. Uh, and beer this week, beer this week is actually a tasty little brew from Modern Times. Gotta love the Modern Times. Had to have a San Diego brew in here for episode 100, of course. Uh, Modern Times Critical Band. Critical Band, it's a hazy IPA. Uh, it, it's actually, and we've, you know, we've had hazies on here before, and some of them get real juicy, and some of them are, you know, more of a New England IPA. This one's right in the middle. It's definitely a little fruitier. It's not super, super juicy where you feel like you're drinking a a beer mosa or something, uh, but it's definitely a little fruitier than, than some of the New England or the, the slightly hazy IPAs that you're going to find. Uh, I recommend if, if you like some uh, if you like some Modern Times, especially if you like some hazy IPAs, it is super tasty. Critical Band from Modern Times. Uh, and it's sitting at 6.7% alcohol, so it is a little heavier than your eh, heavier than your average pale ale, but right in the middle when it comes to IPAs. Uh, and of course, you gotta love Modern Times and their pint cans. I always, I love the pint cans. The problem is when I get them for the podcast, then I end up drinking a little more because I kind of schedule out my prep and, and my actual show uh, around like, okay, here's a beer, here's a beer. But then when you add a few ounces to each beer, it gets a little more ridiculous. And of course, I have an Irish bladder, so it's always the worry of like, oh man, how, how, how quick am I going to have to run to the restroom uh, during this episode or hopefully after the episode because that's happened once or twice before. Check them out, Modern Times, Critical Band, uh, highly, highly, highly recommend it. I highly recommend anything from Modern Times. I've never had a Modern Times beer I didn't like, so check them out. Mmm, that's tasty. And I know Matt loves some Modern Times. He's still living in San Diego. I know Matt from my time in San Diego. Uh, <laughs> that's hilarious. I would agree with you on that one, Matt. Uh, all right, 
And like I said, I, I, I think I just teased it on the video, but in honor of episode 100, we're going to revisit some old stories. Some of, like, the very first stories from episode 0, uh, episode 1, episode 2, episode 3. Actually, what I did was I pulled out my original notebook. I've been using these same notebooks for almost three years. I pulled out my original one to kind of compare notes. Uh, a couple of them are a little spooky, how it was coincidental, and a couple of them are just fun. And I figured we could revisit those things, and we'll probably do the same thing in the Centibration uh, but get, but kind of from everyone else's perspective as opposed to just my own where I'm sitting in the studio and prepping these things. So, uh, let's get into some trending on social platforms. That's right, trending on social platforms. What's hot right now? What's trending? What's going on on the social platforms? These are usually dumb things, but sometimes there's good things. Either way, it's entertaining. Uh, so first thing up is hashtag Instagram down. That's right, hashtag Instagram down. Did you guys know Instagram was down today? It was down today. Hipsters around the world just lost their minds because they could not get on the gram. And of course, a hashtag has to be created out of this. Uh, and, and I'm not, there's nothing really for me to read for you here. Although, except I, I will tell you something that Instagram models finding out they might have to get a real job. <laughs> Still don't understand what Instagram model is. Uh, but check that out today. Hey, check it out any day that Instagram's down. You know, you know, people were just kind of losing their minds, which, which is very strange for me. It's, it's like, really? Really? You can't do it without a social platform for a couple hours? But Instagram was on today, and and I I didn't even notice personally. I just I didn't. I don't notice these things unless I'm actually doing work on a social platform. Then I'm like, oh, it's down. You know, once in a while YouTube would be down. I'm trying to put videos up there. I'm like, ah, eh, I'll just do that later. That's the thing. I don't go and like freak out and feel the need to tweet about stuff being down. But people feel the need to tweet about Instagram being down, uh, and then they just go, oh, there's other social platforms. We don't have to just use Instagram. We got these things called, this thing called Twitter and this thing called Facebook and whatever other, there's all kinds of social, social platforms out there. I can't even keep up with all of them. Uh, and as far as little vintage go tell to the wall stories, uh, so back in 2016 when we first started, first started go tell to the wall podcast, didn't even really have segments. We weren't doing beers uh, on a weekly basis. I mean, there was beer in the studio, but we weren't. We weren't highlighting the beers on a weekly basis, trying to share them with all of you. It was just kind of, it was me sitting in a studio. We weren't doing live feeds. We actually didn't start live feeds until episode 20. Uh, yeah, we did quite a few. Uh, and we started with episode zero, which if, if you haven't been listening from the beginning or didn't go back, you know, now that you've been listening for a while, we didn't even start with episode one. started with episode zero, just to kind of feel things out. And one of those big stories that was going on at that time in 2016, big year for me personally, uh, was... The creepy clowns, the creepy clowns. Remember we were talking, and, and that was one of the first things I got feedback on uh, from really originally from friends that were checking it out before we were able to grow a little bit, was they loved the creepy clowns. Uh, and then it hit a point where a, a guy got guy dressed as a creepy clown got pistol whipped. And I remember back in 2016, I said, okay, that's gonna be the end of the creepy clowns. And sure enough, a week later, uh, somebody in the, in the UK got stabbed, <laughs> a creepy clown. I'm not laughing because it sucks they got stabbed. It was just, it got so out of hand. Uh, people were getting pistol whipped and stabbed because creepy clowns. I just, I don't, I, I was thankful that I never had a creepy clown coming up to me, but I don't know what I would do. So I'm not saying stab people, but I, I, you can't really be that upset. You get a creepy clown running at you. And especially, you know, it's been it, that the movie It has come out since then. Come on, people. Another ridiculous one from 2016 uh, that I really enjoyed was the Gray Sweatpants Challenge. That's right, the Gray Sweatpants Challenge. If you don't remember this one, uh, this was main, and this was one mainly for men, uh, where they were wearing tight gray sweatpants and and taking photos of themselves, specifically their junk and kind of the certain areas of their body in their gray sweatpants, and that was the challenge. Uh, and I thought it was stupid back then, and looking back, I still realize how dumb it was, and I don't understand why people come up with these dumb challenges. And almost three years later, we're still talking about dumb challenges. On Go Tell It's the Wall podcast. In fact, we've got a little more I'm going to get into uh, shortly here on, on, on our social platform trends. Uh, hashtag E3 2019. Hashtag E3 2019. Again, I don't have anything to share with you here. And a lot of this stuff goes over my head. But E3 is happening right now. It's actually happening in uh, downtown Los Angeles, I believe, at the convention center. Huge, like, video and computer game expo and everything having to do with computer games, video games, all that good stuff. And, you know... and. It goes over my head, but I fully recognize that there is a huge, huge gamer community out there. And so if you're interested in video games, computer games, all that good stuff, uh, check out E3. I, I, I don't know that you can buy tickets now. It might, I think it's ending maybe in the next day or so, uh, if it hasn't already. 
but if, if you can't get down there, you know, you can't get to any E3 events, use that hashtag, hashtag E3 2019, and you're going to be able to kind of keep up with all the announcements. I know a lot of, I have some friends, and, and I've seen a lot of uh, posts going around about Nintendo, like Nintendo had some big announcements, uh, all that stuff. Follow the hashtag, check it out, and that's where you're going to be able to, to kind of keep up to date on those things, especially if you can't get down there. So that, that's really more of an informational one. Check them out. I'm just not a video gamer, so I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, all right, one more hashtag I want to share with you this week is hashtag dad quotes. I love this one. Hashtag dad quotes. Uh, I believe Jimmy Fallon had a, had a hand in kind of getting this a little viral. And uh, so what people are doing is they're sharing quotes from their dad. Uh, and I'm trying to find the one that I was looking at earlier. Uh, where was it? Oh, I can't find the exact one. Uh, but there's somebody, uh, it was something about, someone posted about their dad, uh, who the first time he saw their, their nose piercing, he said, well, at least you're, at least you're sober now, <laughs> assuming that they were drunk uh, for the nose piercing. And especially with Father's Day coming up this weekend, I want to share a quote from my father. This was a quote I heard quite often, uh, from basically from when I got to be a teenager. I wasn't getting it so much as a, as a younger kid, because it, it didn't, fit that situation but as a teenager on up to today I I mean I probably haven't gotten it in a couple years because I have my own child now but it just there up until a couple years ago I'm still getting this quote my father before I would leave the house and he'd say to my friends too if I had friends over leaving the house and that's how I know even even as an adult he would say this to me if I was in San Diego um, hanging out with some friends and we'd, we'd be leaving the house or wherever we were, we were with him and he'd always say to me okay if you get arrested don't call me and that would be the last thing he'd say as I walked out the door. Uh, pretty much every time. If you get arrested, don't call me. Uh, and uh, he pretty much meant it. Now, granted, I think if, if I did had gotten arrested, he probably would have helped me out. But that was, that was a dad quote to live by because uh, he shouldn't be getting arrested. Just should not be getting arrested. I'm moving along with some, uh, some social platform trends right now. Uh, we recently, this came out, just this week, there was a YouTuber, YouTuber named Sean, uh, who actually, not Sean O'Rourke, not the one and only Sean O'Rourke. In fact, he spells his name wrong. He spells it S-H-A-U-N. And wrong, it's a, it's a joke. If your name is Sean, you know that that's a constant joke that goes around. So please, don't send me hate mail, uh, any of you out there, with, with your name spelled differently. It's a joke. Uh, but this YouTuber, Sean, actually trolled, uh, trolled YouTube on Twitter. Trolled YouTube. And what he did was actually asked for help with real issues. Uh, so I have it right here. Uh, so for example, on Twitter, he, he, he tweeted at YouTube, or at Team YouTube, which I assume is like their tech support, uh, YouTube TV not working, strange error message, and tagged at, at YouTube. Uh, and then what happened was he eventually did get a reply from YouTube, and they said, oh, what's the problem? And instead of going into whichever problem he was, you know, pretending to have, literally pretending to have, what he did was brought up the issue of uh, Steven Crowder. Talked about this a couple episodes ago. Steven Crowder, who was spewing hate uh, and just, just uh, anti-gay rhetoric all around YouTube. And he, that's the stuff where he's kind of half-banned now, demonetized. I don't know if he got had his actual channel removed. Uh, but that's what he did to, to kind of bring light to that, which was kind of brilliant. It really was. It was brilliant on his part to, to, to bait YouTube into actually responding to him and then bringing that up. The crazy thing is, he actually did it again. He did it again after YouTube got caught uh, and said he was having trouble. And this is this is where you get him. You bring up money. And he said he was he was having trouble paying for his YouTube TV premium account and needed some help with it. And sure enough, he got a response on Twitter. And uh, what did he do? What did he do? He of course comes right back with the Steven Crowder stuff. Uh, bringing, not only pointing that out to YouTube, but the, the important thing here with, because I, I am very anti-social platform troll, internet trolls, just stop. However, when you're doing it to bring awareness to something important like this, it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. He's using the platform for good. Uh, and, and like I said, he's not only getting it in front of YouTube and pointing that out to YouTube, being like, yeah, here, it's right here. But he's, he's putting that in front of other people that are reading it through Twitter and things start to trend. That's why we talk about social platform trends on a weekly basis and everyone becomes aware of what's going on, even if you weren't already aware of the whole Steven Crowder thing uh, and, and the hate that he had constantly been spewing. So good on you, Sean. Uh, might have to check out your YouTube channel. I believe he's like a political analyst. It's just, 
and and it's fantastic. I mean, do those things, but it's you get when you get a little too deep into policy and everything else, I'm like, ah, no, no. I just want gay people to be able to get married. I, I want health care, and I, w- I want people to be able to smoke pot. Like, and, and there's much more than that, but you, you get my drift. Like, I'm not trying to trying to talk about tax rates and everything else. That's that's just. I went to film school for a reason. I, I didn't. I, my education is is film. Not a lot of math and those things going on uh, when it comes to when it comes to film school. All right, one more thing here in uh, trending on social platforms. Uh, I found this, which I found really interesting today, because and and I was reminded because of the stupid challenges we talk of talk about on a week almost weekly basis depending when they're popping up and i found an article that talked about the five most dangerous internet challenges so far i i would say of all time but so far because you know some other dumb challenges is is going to come up and here's the thing this is how dumb the challenges are the tide pod challenge didn't even make this list people are eating laundry detergent didn't make the list because that's the dumb world that we live in where people are like oh (laughs) eating tide pods Man, yeah, that's maybe top 10. It's definitely not top 5. So I want to run through these things with you and give you a couple examples. Uh, number one on this list is the In My Feelings Kiki Challenge. Remember, we talked about this. We talked about, I think, all of these at one point on the podcast. Uh, this was people getting out of a moving car and dancing next to the moving car, and it was ridiculous, and people were getting injured. And I said, why are you getting out of a moving car? I mean, that's I don't even think they teach you that in driver's ed because it's kind of like, well, duh, don't get out of a moving car and dance next to a moving car because that's dumb. Uh, and, in fact, we had a specific instance where there was a 22-year-old uh, driving and jumped out of the car where the driver was, was going 15 miles an hour. Uh, and, uh, no, I'm sorry. Oh, no, that's, there's an 18-year-old uh, who actually jumped out of the car and tripped and fell and hit her head, causing her skull to fracture and bleeding in her brain and blood clot, clots in her ear. Uh, so all for a silly challenge. This this literally happened. Uh, number two is the fire challenge. The fire challenge. If you're not familiar with this one, this was when people were dousing themselves in alcohol or nail polish remover uh, or some kind of flammable liquid substance, and then they would light themselves on fire uh, and try to put the fire out. I mean, there was tons of these videos going around. People were doing it like in the shower so they could just turn the water on. Tons of people got hurt on this. And in fact, there was a 16-year-old. Uh, he was 16 in 2014 when this happened. Uh, Fernando Valencia doused himself in nail polish remover uh, and then ended up giving himself second and third degree burns on his neck and waist. And if you're curious about that one, there's actually a video that you can go watch to see the actual burn injuries. It's it's crazy. Uh, number three is the choking game, uh, the pass out challenge. Apparently people have called it the space monkey challenge. I don't even understand what that is. Uh, and this is, and I w- I'll give you a, uh, I'll give you just an interesting stat here. This is when people would, they would choke themselves to, to the point of near passing out to kind of get that high, that adrenaline rush. Uh, the U.S. Center for Disease Control and Prevention actually has evidence, and this is before this was even a challenge. Between 1995 and 2008, at least 82, 82 young people, uh, with average age being 13, have died in the United States as a result of this game. Since 95, this is this is pre-social platforms. This has been going on for too long. Too long. And, and I, I realize there's a sexual fetish with this. I'm not trying to get into that. Uh, but these are the things that need to stop. Things that need to stop. Uh, and then we actually did have a couple kids die from doing this this particular challenge. In fact, there was a 16-year-old. Uh, no. Yes, 16-year-old uh, who died in 2008 from, from doing this challenge. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Uh, number four is the cinnamon challenge. Uh, yes, cinnamon is delicious, but you've, saw, you've, you've all seen this one. This is when people put a spoonful of cinnamon in their mouth and try to eat it, and you clearly can't. It's going to make you cough and everything else. Uh, but you can cause serious, serious damage to your lungs. In fact, there was a 16-year-old uh, who ha- ended up with a collapsed lung after trying the cinnamon challenge. Collapsed lung. And now she has to use an a, uh, inhaler uh, for her asthma that she never had before that specific incident. Uh, and number five... Last one of these top five is the Salt and Ice Challenge. Salt and Ice Challenge. Uh, If you haven't heard of this one, this is when people were sprinkling some salt on their wrist, their arm, and then they would put an ice cube on it and see how long they could stand the the freezing, like the the sensation that you get from the freezing of the ice. Uh, And there is actually a dermatologist who came out and said, well, yeah, there's a reason you hit a point that you don't feel the ice anymore because you are actually killing nerve endings in your skin. You're killing nerve endings. 
And a lot of times you're not going to be able to recover them ever, ever, ever again. Those are, that's just a few of them. That's just a few of them. Those are the top five most dangerous. We, we literally had uh, young people die from some of those uh, and, and permanent injuries from, from all of them. At the very minimum, permanent injuries from all of them. Uh, so make sure you're not doing these kind of things. Just, just don't. Just don't do it. And make sure your kids aren't doing it. Educate them to not do dumb things like this just to get a couple clicks on the internet. You know, remember, we had a, we had a, a woman who shot her fiancé. Shot him and killed him because she thought a book would stop a bullet. Spoiler alert. <laughs> book doesn't always stop a bullet. Ah, oh, people. Darwin would be quite proud, though. Right? I mean, Charles Darwin, he'd be like, yep. Yeah, that's what I was telling you about. That's what I was talking about. Survival of the fittest. Survival of the smartest. All right, let's get into some entertainment news now. Entertainment news, and I got a couple 2016 things to talk to you about. Uh, in 2016, and this was like right at the very beginning, episode zero, episode one, uh, Fraggle Rock was announced that it was coming back to HBO. Fraggle Rock. They put the entire catalog of Fraggle Rock episodes from the 80s all on HBO, and they're actually still on there today. Uh, additionally, Mr. Robot, my favorite show, my favorite show, <laughs> it was probably a paperback book, Matt, you're right. <laughs> probably paperback. No, I think they were using using like a Desert Eagle. That's the thing. Like that's a serious gun. You're not talking about a little, you know, 22 caliber pistol. I know one. I'm very minimal knowledge, but I know a couple things. Uh, but anyway, Mr. Robot, my favorite show on television. I've even got Elliot that sits sits right underneath my monitor uh, all the time, sitting here staring at me for every episode of Go Tell It's the Wall podcast. Uh, they were between seasons, and I was talking about the Red Wheelbarrow book that actually connected the, the two seasons that we were between. And the, the season that we were approaching has, of course, come and gone. Uh, and we're looking our, our, at the last season of Mr. Robot coming up here. Uh, I believe it starts in the fall. I believe it's the fall. Go back and listen. I, uh, I had uh, talked about the exact timing on that uh, at some point here recently. Uh, so that's stuff from 2016 and still relevant. Fraggle Rock is still awesome. Uh, and Mr. Robot's still going strong. Now, as far as current stuff, we got some news from HBO. They have decided to cancel Vice News Tonight. That's right, Vice News Tonight, which is a daily uh, news program that runs on HBO. I don't personally watch it, but I have heard of it. I know they have done some good things. Uh, and it's actually been on the air for uh, almost seven years, or about seven years, and it's going to be ending in September. So that will no longer be on HBO as of September. Vice is actually making some internal changes uh, they had some leadership changes recently that I that I had read about, and additionally, they're shopping the show to other networks. So there's a good chance if you're a Vice News Tonight fan, you're probably going to find it on another network. It just won't be HBO. Uh, and it, from what I can understand, it doesn't seem like there's any bad blood with HBO. It's just, this is also what HBO does, and especially when you're talking seven years, HBO does seven to eight seasons of everything, and then and then burp, done, done. You know, you, seven or eight seasons. Look at so Sopranos. Uh, oh my gosh, I, I'm, uh, there's other shows, I'm just blanking on them right now, but they do seven, eight seasons, and the, that's it, that's it. So it could just be along those lines too. Uh, speaking of things ending, well if you haven't heard of this one you might be upset because I know there are many, many, many fans out there. The Good Place, The Good Place, the show on NBC from Mike Schur. Uh, he, Mike Schur actually did an interview recently and confirmed that season four will be the last season for The Good Place. So this upcoming season, which should start in the fall, and actually... Chris might be able to correct me on the scheduling for The Good Place. I believe it's a fall show, but it might be an, uh, an off-season off programming uh, situation with The Good Place. I always just watch it on Hulu, so I'm not actually sure uh, when it's airing live on television. Um, but, but as far as the news we've gotten from uh, Mike Schur, he had the entire arc planned out. Uh, so unlike a lot of shows, he's actually just going to tie it up in a nice little bow. Very much the way Sam Raimi is doing... Sam Raimi, Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm, oh my gosh, I'm blanking on his name. But the creator of Mr. Robot, uh, very much the way he's done it and, and going to be wrapping it up in the next season. To have that entire story arc kind of in, in the back of your mind or even in the forefront of your mind and know how you want to wrap things up, you got to give some respect for that. Uh, and that is actually going to include a one-hour series finale for The Good Place, so look forward to that next year. I mean, don't look forward to a great show ending, but look forward to, to a great final season for The Good Place, because it, it is a good show. I enjoy the show. 
If you haven't, if you haven't seen it, check it out. It, it's it's very enjoyable. They got some great shows. Thank you, Chris. I thought it was a fall show, but for some reason in the back of my mind, I was like, wait, are they a spring show? But they are a fall. They are a fall show. Uh, so that season four should be premiering uh, this fall, fall of 2019. All right. Speaking of uh, no, that's not right. I was gonna say speaking of things ending. This would be more like, speaking of things coming back, speaking of reboots, but I haven't been talking about reboots, so that doesn't make any sense. Uh, the Boondocks. The Boondocks. Uh, not the comic strip. I believe the comic strip is still around. It's been around since the 90s, like 1995, if I remember correctly. I feel like I just pulled that year out of my out of my butt there. It's just like, nah, 96. I even had it right here. Why am I making up na years when I have it right in front of me? 1996 is when the comic strip came out. Uh, but they had an animated series. That premiered in 2005 on Adult Swim, which was the late night aspect of Cartoon Network. I believe they have their own channel at this point. Now, again, I don't, I don't have cable. I don't keep up on these networks unless they have some show that I am really, really into watching. Uh, the Boondocks, and it ran for a couple years and then, and then came to an end. Uh, we're getting news on a reboot now. Uh, it's coming soon. We don't have exact dates or anything, but it will be coming soon with all of the same characters. Uh, and it's the original series creator that is working on it. So same same animated series creator, which who is also the creator of the original comic strip. Uh, and it's it's going to have the same characters, but it's going to have a modern twist. Modern twist, which and you know what that means if you're familiar with Boondocks. Uh, I don't want to say they get political the way political cartoons do, uh, but they're very much a no BS comic strip, no BS cartoon. Uh, and I'm sure we're going to see them them kind of coming after the Orange Menace in that administration, at least to a certain extent, uh, until that administration's finally finally pushed out of there. Uh, so look forward to that. I, we don't know where it's going to where it's going to be coming. I imagine it will be coming uh, back to Adult Swim and or Cartoon Network. Uh, and and in fact, that's a funny little vintage story. The uh, not long after the Orange Menace was elected, the original Boondocks creator actually put out kind of a one-off political comic strip uh, uh, blasting the Orange Menace and, and kind of how, how he made his way. I can't remember the, exactly what was going on, but he kind of he came out and was like, no, we need some boondocks right now, and there we had it. So, so you know that's coming uh, when, the, when the cartoon actually reboots and, and airs. Uh, Disney Plus. Disney Plus actually just gave their first look at the, uh, the new Monsters animated show. It's going to be called Monsters at Work. It's going to be exclusively on Disney Plus. I believe I mentioned this previously, but now we have a little more information. Uh, they have unveiled a new character who is voiced by Ben Feldman from Superstore. Uh, actually plays a whole new character in the show. And he, it's, it's, it's a like mechanic character uh, who ends up getting promoted and to the... the I'm, I'm not that familiar with Monsters, Inc. It was called, like, the scare floor before, but I didn't think it's, like, the laugh floor now. He's promoted to the area where the main characters, um, Mike and Sully, work. And so it's going to revolve around their relationship. Uh, additionally, Good, uh, John Goodman and Billy Crystal will both be voicing their original characters. Uh, of course, John Goodman as Sully and, and Billy Crystal as, as, uh, as Mike. Uh, so look forward to that. I will, of course, never see it because I will not pay the money for Disney+. Plus. It's just not going to happen. Just not going to happen. All right. Uh, Ruby Rose. Ruby Rose. I've talked about, the, talked about her a couple times over the years. Uh, and specifically with this, she's actually the, the star of the upcoming Batwoman show that is coming out. It's going to be part of the Arrowverse. And in fact, I I do watch The Flash. I watch Legends of Tomorrow, and they did a they did a hot little teaser of, of Batwoman in Gotham City and that whole story arc. And they didn't really didn't really give much of a story arc. They just teased it a little bit. We knew it was coming, uh, but she's back in the news recently. And if you're not familiar with with Ruby Rose, she is what you would call a gender fluid actress, uh, where. Yeah, and you see these, you see these like models and everything else. She has shorter hair, where she can kind of model male clothing can I you know I wouldn't say she could play like a, a flat and maybe she can I'm not I'm not super familiar with her work uh, but it's this gender fluid where she where she can kind of play a male play a female uh, she was on Orange is the New Black that was kind of her big outside of modeling that was her big breakout uh, was being on Orange is the New Black and she's in the news because and you would think like yes I talked about this previously. She's playing a lesbian Batwoman in the Arrowverse. It's, I'm, I'm sure it's going to air on the CW. It has to be airing on the CW. Um, that's where, where all the other 
Arrowverse shows are, uh, you know, Arrow, of course, Flash, uh, Supergirl, and Legends of Tomorrow. So I'm sure it's going to be airing there. Uh, and you would think, like, oh, yes, well, all of the fanboys are getting upset because there is a lesbian uh, Batwoman, and this is crazy. And there was some of that flack that came out at first. No, what's happening now is it's getting even more ridiculous. Because she is gender fluid, she's actually been getting some, some, uh, some pushback from fan bases saying that she can't play a lesbian character on Batwoman because she is gender fluid. Basically, she's not lesbian enough. I'm not even kidding. This shit is happening. This is what's happening. And unfortunately, of course, she came out and said, well, what the hell? But still getting pushback on this. Still getting pushback on this. And I just, I don't get it. When will people just relax? Does it really matter? Does it really matter? Like, she's playing a character. She's not lesbian enough for, and that's the thing, is we have to deal with all these bigoted, hatred people out there that are like, well, women can't be superheroes, and you, there's, you, gay is a choice. You can't be homosexual. You're just choosing to be that way. And now we've got people who are like, well, you're not lesbian enough. Like, Jesus fucking Christ, what do you, what do you want from people? What do you want? You can never win. You can never win. This is like my entire life having a two-year-old at home. I can never win. Support Ruby Rose. We're going to support Ruby Rose. I'm going to watch Batwoman. I'm going to enjoy it. I enjoy the Arrowverse shows that I've watched so far. Uh, I haven't watched Supergirl uh, or Arrow yet, other than the crossovers that you get with Flash. I'm very, very much a Flash fan. Big time Flash fan. Was a bit of a Legends fan and finally got into watching The Flash. And it's a fantastic show. If you're looking for something fun to watch, uh, The Flash would be one. It's, it's all on Netflix. And who doesn't love Tom Cavanaugh? For God's sake, Tom Cavanaugh, one of my favorite sitcom show, TV show actors out there. Just fantastic. Uh, Chris, I'm, sh I'm curious what you have to say on this next one that we're going to talk about. Uh, Dark Phoenix. Dark Phoenix, the, the most recent installment of the X-Men films. Uh, just came into theaters recently, and we're getting some news out of here, and people have just been destroying it. I was actually, I was afraid to go on Rotten Tomatoes and type in Dark Phoenix, because I felt like my computer was just going to catch fire, because that's kind of what's been happening with this Dark Phoenix movie. Uh, people have just hated it, and not only have people hated it and not gone to the box office, but it's gotten so bad, so bad, I'm with you, Chris, I love The Flash, uh, and I'm curious with Batwoman. It's gotten, it, it's so bad that it looks like they're not even going to make their budget back. Not even going to make their budget back. And here's the thing, I like to, I, I try not to get too geeked out on things, it's like, just, if you want to show me an entertaining thing, I'm good. Uh, but a lot of the complaints have been around the timeline and how it pertains to the, all of the X-Men films, uh, and how really Dark Phoenix doesn't even fit into that timeline of X-Men films. And without getting too in-depth on it, because I was like, well, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do a lot of research on this film that's just terrible and not doing well, but I was thinking back to the X-Men films and it's like, yeah, without really knowing exactly what's happening. They've been all over the place, all the X-Men films. You know, Fox had the X-Men films uh, up until recently when Disney acquired uh, Fox, uh, 20th Century Fox, not Fox News. And, uh, and, and I could see that being a legitimate complaint, even for a casual fan. And so that, that's, a, that's a big thing with it, and the characters just didn't fit with the story. Uh, and and that's, not, that's just me kind of on the outside. Uh, when you look at comic book readers and and pertaining to Dark Phoenix and, and the movie compared to the comic books, they're just destroying it. Chris, I'm curious if you ever read, uh, like, the Dark Phoenix saga and, and all that stuff, but just, just destroying it, and they're not even going to make their money back. And the funny thing is, Disney's taking that loss on the chin now. <laughs> even though they didn't make the film. And I laugh. Like, nobody's getting fired at Disney as much as I'm always like, stop firing people, Disney. Nobody's getting fired. It's just funny... Disney's got to take one on the chin right now because they acquired Fox and let them do this film. And if you remember a couple weeks ago, we talked about uh, how the ending had to be redone because it was a little too close to another Marvel Universe film. And, uh, yeah, see. Oh, did you see the film, Chris? Chris might have actually seen the film. And I, I was, like, I was never a big comic book geek. Uh, and I don't mean that as high and mighty, like, I'm not a geek. I... No, I just wasn't super into comic books. I was a little bit into X-Men. And when the first X-Men came out, I was actually very excited to see it in the theater uh, because I had been a fan of the X-Men as a kid and, and it just never really took off for me. You know, not the way like Deadpool did and even Avengers. On that note, I've watched most of Avengers Endgame on YouTube, so I'm good. I don't actually need to watch it. Uh, yeah, 
And that's the thing for me with Marvel films. Chris, our, uh, Chris the song on our producer, is uh, is actually feeding me some information. That's what he's here for, stats and information. And uh, it, it's it's not fun. They have no fun in the movie. That's actually one thing I do love about Marvel movies. Uh, and really about the... Uh, I haven't seen a lot of DC movies, but The Flash is DC. The, all the Arrowverse. You have fun in there. You know, ten, I swear to God, Tom Cavanaugh and The Flash is just there <laughs> like as comic relief. And it, I don't want to spoil things if you haven't watched it, but if you're a Tom Cavanaugh fan, you have to watch The Flash. Even if you're like, I hate comic books. I hate them. I hate comic book characters. I assure you, even if you hate all those things, just watch it for Tom Cavanaugh. He's freaking brilliant in it. Just absolutely brilliant. All right, more Disney news, actually. Yeah, more Disney and Marvel news. We just got word this week. Disney got their permits from the city of Anaheim to launch Marvel Land. That's right. R hot on the heels of uh, Galaxy's Edge, Star Wars Land down there at Disney. Uh, they, they are moving forward with plans for Marvel Land, which will be a part of California Adventure. Uh, so look forward to that if you're a Marvel fan. I'm a little bit of a Marvel fan myself, but I... This happened the last time I was at the parks uh, a few years ago. Uh, my daughter was may nah, maybe six months old, so like two years ago. My 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 park ticket had a Marvel character on it, and I'm walking around, and it was just like, oh, this is Marvel and and Star Wars parks now, which is fine. I I'm fans of both of those things. However, let's not kill Disney. Let's not kill the classic characters just to bring in this new stuff. That is some millennial bullshit that you're bringing into, into the world there, Disney. And let's just calm down a little bit on it. I'm sure they'll do a good job. They'll sell tons of tickets, make more money for the shareholders. But let's not forget the classic Disney characters. They're destroying these things at all the parks. Journey into Imagination, gone. You know? And personally, that's one of my favorites. Uh, you can kind of see it on the camera. i got my figment sitting right up there. And I have my figment sitting right here. That figment does not leave the desk. That's my actual figment. For those of you who have been listening to the show for a long time, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And speaking of uh, theme parks, oh man. So Harry Potter, not the Harry Potter here at Universal Hollywood, the Harry Potter at Universal Orlando just opened a brand new roller coaster, $300 million roller coaster. Uh, it's Hagrid themed. I'm not a big Harry Potter. I think he was the bearded big dude. Hagrid had a dog and stuff. Hagrid themed coaster just opened at Harry Potter Land, which has been the the land has been open for a while. It's a brand new coaster just opened, three hundred million dollars, uh, and the day it opened, about an hour into opening, there was a ten hour wait to ride the roller coaster. Ten, ten hours to ride a roller coaster, and this is an hour after it opened. Uh, there were reports later in the day that it was still about an eight to ten hour wait, even a little while after it had the park had opened. Eight to ten hours. I'm not waiting 10 hours for anything. Anything. Bridget and Chris will appreciate this. I will wait 10 hours on Gate Road. It's the only place I'm waiting 10 hours. But I ain't stand in a hot line for, to get on a, you know, one minute ride. You're, you're you know, I'll wait 10 hours on Gate Road to get into the, hap the real happiest place on earth, which is Burning Man. And you're also having fun on Gate Road and talking with people and... It's been a couple years since I was at Burning Man, but I still smoke real cigarettes at Burning Man, so I just start smoking my cigarettes. I'm like, oh, yeah. Tastes like college. Absolutely. So there I'll do it. I'm not doing it for a ride. I'm just not. I'm not. I don't care how good the ride is. I don't. Maybe if it was like a live unicorn with wings. All right, I might do 10 hours. Might do 10 hours. All right, one more thing here. In, no, a couple more things in entertainment news. Uh, Nike and Stranger Things. Nike has announced a new capsule collection. New capsule collection. These are just kind of sh smaller collections. And what they're, it is in collaboration with Stranger Things. This one's actually interesting to me. I'm not a huge Nike fan. I do wear Nikes uh, to play basketball in. Wear them occasionally for running shoes. More of Adidas guy for running. Uh, just And that's just I, not a brand thing. I just, I've been running since I was a teenager and I learned years ago that Adidas are the best fit for me, you know, uh, so nothing against Nike. I do own a couple of uh, Nike Janoskis, but not a huge fan. But I'm kind of excited about this because they're doing retro styles like in the show. So they're basically re-releasing some of the 80s styles of Nike shoes, which could be cool. I might end up picking up a pair. Especially, I, as much as I don't wear a lot of Nikes, I got a soft spot for Nike. I'm a huge Steve Prefontaine fan. 
Uh, and obviously, because of that, I'm a huge Bill Bowerman fan who created the original Nikes along with Phil Knight and blah, blah, blah. Go do some Googling if you're curious. A little more of that story. But I do like like some Steve Prefontaine and some Bill Bowerman. So I'm all about the Nikes. Might pick up a pair of those depending what comes out. Uh, but it's probably going to be cool. They're, they've teased some stuff. It's it's the old 80s style. Uh, the basketball shoes, the running shoes, and, and the... You know the ones I'm talking about where they have like kind of the toe. Not the shell... Like kind of the Nike version of the shell toe Adidas. Which it's not shell toe. But you know what I'm talking about if, if, if you know anything about sneakers. So look forward to that. Those are coming out. Stranger Things, Nike... Uh, capsule collaboration. All right, I want to throw a couple of uh, vintage go tell to the wall things at you. Gosh, we are getting way over time. I knew it was going to happen because I just was kind of jammering on about episode 100. Uh, 2016, a couple of sports things I wanted to talk about. Uh, first one is, you know, after we started this podcast, and I, I would like to take some credit for it in any way that I can. After we started this podcast in 2016, the Chicago Cubs won their first World Series in forever. <laughs> forever. I think it was their first World Series ever. Uh, but long-suffering fan base, including my mother and, and my grandmother, who fortunately my grandmother got to see that happen before she passed away. Uh, the Chicago Cubs won the, uh, won the World Series in 2016. And we were talking about that quite a bit on the podcast. Additionally, we were talking about uh, the, the social injustice protests that were happening in the NFL, and I found that interesting because we are still debating this, and I know it's going to become a hot... T it, it actually recently became a hot topic with uh, Megan Rapinoe, who is a, a player on the U.S. women's national team for soccer, and talking about how she kneels for the national anthem. So it, it's still going to be a hot topic, and I'm sure when, when football season starts up again, we will be dealing with that. So coincidentally, still dealing with the social injustice protests in the NFL. Most importantly, uh, I want to talk about something right now, and I waited until I got to it because I realized that I was talking about this in 2016. Uh, one of my absolute favorite baseball players of all time uh, retired in 2016, the great David Ortiz, uh, who, was not only, who is not only a fantastic baseball player, was when he was playing, uh, fantastic humanitarian. If you remember after the 2013 marathon bombings, he stood on the field at Fenway Park with a microphone in his hand and he told the crowd, this is our fucking city. And he wasn't fined by anybody. FCC didn't even come after him because he, all those people knew that that's what that city needed. And then went on to win the World Series in 2013. Boston strong. And he retired in 2016. Uh, not long after I started the podcast, really. Because depending on timing, I mean, he retired at the end of the season. Uh, I saw him play, uh, one, well, twice, two games, one last time down there in Anaheim uh, the, the April before. And gave him a lot of love because I, I love the guy. Uh, there's David Ortiz stuff around here. Uh, he did, he's done a lot for the community, continues to do a lot for the community. Uh, and it, if you're not aware of this, this is, why, this is the one that became a little spooky for me. A few days ago, he was actually shot in the back in the Dominican Republic. Uh, was shot in the back. And we've now found out that it was a, a hitman for hire situation. Uh, someone was hired to shoot him in the back in the Dominican Republic. Thankfully, he, he's doing okay. He's in, he's in critical condition, uh, but doing okay. Had a couple surgeries. The Boston Red Sox organization actually sent a plane down to the Dominican Republic to pick him up and bring him back to Boston for further treatment. Uh, as of a couple days ago, he had taken a couple steps. He was, was awake and conscious and aware of what was happening. Uh, but I'll just say this, uh, it, it's always sad when something happens to somebody. It's even sadder when you have a personal connection to them, uh, the way I do with David Ortiz or Big Poppy, as he is affectionately known. Uh, but it's even worse when you look at somebody who's done so much for their community. Uh, he has many, not many, he has a few nonprofit organizations that he works with. He helps children. He helps people in need. Uh, like I said, with Boston Strong. He helped the entire city recover after a terrorist attack. Recover. Played the greatest, possibly the greatest hitting performance in a World Series ever. And that, that that's just him playing on the field. That's not to mention all the things he did outside of baseball. And continues to do. And hopefully still will do once he recovers from this. Uh, so I will say to that, we're with you, Poppy. We're all Poppy Strong. And to everyone else out there that doesn't understand it, those, for those of us in Boston, those of us that are Boston fans, that's our fucking designated hitter. 
That's our fucking designated hitter. And I wish a speedy recovery to David Ortiz. Because I'm not losing another of my favorite baseball players. Selfishly. I'm not. And the world needs people like him doing good. I know. I don't know. I, Chris, I'm sure you've been... At this. I was... I was a wreck for a minute the other day when it happened, and then the report was, oh, he got shot in the leg, and I was like, okay, well, thank God. It's just, you know, even if, if God forbid, he did lose his leg, he's still going to live, and then news comes out he was shot in the back, and a bullet went through him, and all these... It's horrible. It's horrible. Uh, all right, one quick music thing I'm going to leave you with. The Misfits have been doing some reunion shows, which is weird, because Glenn Danzig and Jerry only have not gotten along for about 30 years, and it was very strange that they were getting together for these reunion shows. We're now finding out that there is actually... Uh, a lawsuit going on that be for them to keep their trademark, their trademarks and, and some of their other stuff, they actually needed to do 10 shows. And so that's why that reunion show is happening right now, or those reunion shows. All right, let me get some of, through the, uh, some of this parenting life. That's right, parenting life. And I will kick this off with happy Father's Day to everyone out there. Father's Day is this coming Sunday. Make sure you call your father. Send him a Father's Day card, send him a gift, whatever it is you want to do. Uh, so happy Father's Day to everyone out there, especially to Chris Hassong, our on-air producer and stats and information person. Uh, and, and more importantly, nothing not to say you're not important, Chris. More importantly for me personally, uh, happy Father's Day to my own father, Pop, Jack O'Rourke, uh, who's actually recovering from heart surgery that he just had this week. Uh, doing well. Doing okay, but happy Father's Day to you, Pop, and uh, we'll be talking on Sunday. And happy birthday to you as well, for God's sake. Old man, it's, it's, his, it's his birthday on Monday. It's Father's Day Sunday, it's his birthday on Monday. Uh, so happy happy Father's Day, happy birthday, Pops, uh, Jack O'Rourke. Thank you very much, Chris. I will be celebrating, uh, Chris is wishing me a happy Father's Day. Uh, I will be celebrating with, with my amazing, beautiful daughter and wife um, this Sunday. Very, very much looking forward to that. Uh, for 2016, which we didn't actually have a parenting life segment, but we were talking about keeping kids off social media. That's still just that's still the case today. Keep them off social media. I want to share a personal story with you. I was at the library just the other day, uh, and this is going to have to. And we're going over time this week. I don't care. It's episode 100. We're going to have centibration. We're going to go over time on that, but I'm, we're we're going over time here. Uh, I was at the library just yesterday. Just yesterday, walk with my my daughter to the library. My daughter's two and a half. There's a woman in there, uh, I believe she was a nanny, and, and I don't know for sure. She could, she could have been mother, but she was, she was a little bit older, and the child she was there, she was, uh, she was Latina, and the child she was there with looked whiter than me, like blonde hair, blue eyes, like, so I assume nanny, but I, I don't know. And she asks, she says, how old, how old, she, how old is she? And my, you know, my daughter Zoe was like running around the little play area at the library, and I'm like, oh, she's two and a half. Like, she's just gotten really active over the past couple months, and she goes, oh, oh, yeah. And she looks at me, she goes, oh, poor mama. Like, as in poor mama, because here's the two-and-a-half-year-old who's really active, so poor mama. I didn't say anything, but I'm sit I'm standing there, and I go, do you, not, do, you, do, you, do you not see me? Do you not see me? Like, I I'm standing right here. It's my kid. I'm standing right here. So poor mama, and this is the other day, it's like 97 degrees. We go for a little walk and I get, get my kid in the library so she can run around in some air conditioning and stuff. Not run around the library causing a ruckus. They have a kid area there. Relax, everybody. Yeah, so poor mama, my wife, that's sitting in an air-conditioned office while I am dealing with this crazy two-and-a-half-year-old. Yeah. Nothing about, oh, nothing about poor daddy. No. Poor mama. Why? Because to some people, only women can take care of children. Not men. I knew that one was going to upset you. Yeah, I was waiting for Chris with that. Chris comes on, were you babysitting, in quotes? I got, see, Chris knows. Chris Chris has two girls at home as well. Uh, Chris knows how that can be, and it's so frustrating for me. Uh, and and that, it's funny because that leads me into uh, mansplaining to dads. This article came out recently. Uh, sorry, not mansplaining, momsplaining. I don't want to hijack the mansplaining word, but I thought this was interesting. And it talks about women giving women mothers giving advice to to fathers out there, assuming that they don't know what they're doing. And that's exactly some, kind of what was happening here. And in fact, there's a woman who likes to walk by. She walks her dog by my house every once in a while, uh, and I'll be outside in the front yard playing with with my daughter. And she will walk by at times. And it, it's been a while since she's done this, but back when in the winter when it was a little colder here, you know, cold in Los Angeles, it's 65 degrees, but colder. 
And she'd walk by and she'd wave at my daughter and she'd be like, oh, are you cold? Because my daughter would be only be wearing a sweatshirt and maybe not a hat, maybe not a beanie. Or it would be like 70 degrees and she'd just have long sleeves on but no jacket or sweatshirt or anything. Perfectly warm. Oh, are you cold? Are you sure you're warm enough? Are you cold? And she would say this to my daughter. Ask my daughter. And I'd be like, she's good. And one day I did even say to her, because I, I, I looked at my phone, I was like, it's 70 degrees. Thank you, but it's 70 degrees. Here's the interesting thing. Here's the interesting thing. There's a house right across the street from me. They have multiple kids out there playing all the time. And then there's a house like diagonal from me right next to that house. They have kids playing out there all the time. There were multiple times that she did this and walked, because she did it multiple times. Out of those times, there was a few times that she did that. And I look across the street and there's kids playing in shorts and t-shirts. Like minimal clothing. Same weather. And I watch her cross the street and walk down the street. She doesn't say a damn thing to those kids or those parents. Not a damn thing. Why? Because she just assumes, because since I'm a dad, I must not know how to dress my child. I must not know how to keep my child warm. There's another aspect to that, and if you want to know about it, I will tell it to you personally. I'm not putting it on the air right now, because then people are going to come after me. What do you mean? No, it's, it happens in my neighborhood. And there's another aspect to that. It happens in my neighborhood. And it has to do with, uh, with who I am compared to the rest of the neighborhood. Uh, and on that same note, actually, John Legend has been has been coming out recently, uh, and has been for a while, but got became much more open uh, about dads being more active. And one of the things he was saying was that dads should be changing diapers. Dads should be changing diapers. Uh, and this is fantastic. He's one of them, in addition to Ryan Reynolds, and I think there was someone else that have been constantly pushing for changing tables in men's rooms. I think this is of the utmost importance. Utmost importance. In fact, you want to talk semi-vintage, when, uh, when I talk about the story about the sign where it was for mothers of young children and expected mothers, and this guy was like, he was a stay-at-home father, and he's like, well, uh, can I, can I, uh, I don't, nah, 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 you know. Got it. There's got to be an equal back and forth when it comes to that. And, and I've said that, and, I, and here comes Bridget, because Bridget remembers this. I've said it many times before. After the birth of my child... There, there was nothing that I wasn't capable of doing that my wife was doing. Nothing, with one exception, and that was breastfeeding. It's the only exception. You, as a man, you're, per, you're perfect. Once the, you can't birth the child, once the child is birthed, you're capable of doing literally everything that the mother is capable of doing with the exception of breastfeeding. And I'm sure there's some contraption out there you can buy on Amazon where you can do that yourself as well. Change the diapers, dads. Change the diapers. Uh, for the first m at least month, I changed every single one of my daughter's diapers. My, my wife will tell you that. I changed every single one because my wife would have to be breastfeeding. She would be up at night more than I was because bassinet right next to the bed, she's breastfeeding. And I said, I will change every single diaper. So she would feed and then elbow me if, if she needed a diaper and I'd go change a diaper. Or she'd feed and put it right back in the bassinet. And I made sure to change every single diaper for at least a month. Probably a little more than that, but at least a month. I was like, you got other stuff to do. I can change diapers. I got it. So good on you, John Legend. Uh, I'm glad he's being open. And if you're curious about it, go go do some Googling. He actually talked about Chrissy Teigen and her postpartum uh, depression, and and he he was actually forced to do a lot about a lot of that. Um, and I'm sure he would have been willing to anyway, uh, but he was forced to do a lot of that because of that. Uh, real quick, happy fiftieth. Birthday Anniversary to the Very Hungry Caterpillar. It's a great book if you're not familiar with Eric Carl and you have, if you have young kids and you're not familiar with Eric Carl, I don't know how you did it, uh, but if you're not, check out Eric Carl. Fantastic author, uh, fantastic artist, does all the illustrations for his books, um, and, and there's just a lot of great books out there. And if you have kids that don't like to eat their salad, Kraft recently came out with Salad Frosting. That's right, Salad Frosting from Kraft. You can probably find it at your local grocery store. It's not actually frosting, it's just ranch dressing in a tube that says salad frosting. Which, I can see this is like kind of brilliant. You're like, alright, well kids think of frosting and everything else. Here's the other thing, like don't teach your kid to just eat frosting on anything. It's, they're going to end up with the diabetes. That's what's going to happen, they're going to get the diabetes. Uh, and additionally, it's ranch dressing in a tube. Like, I don't know about any of you out there. When I was a kid, I liked ranch dressing as a kid. Let's just teach kids that ranch dressing is good. They don't necessarily have to have frosting. It's freaking ranch dressing. It's barely dressing. It's just fat and flavoring. But if your kid doesn't want to eat salad and you think the salad frosting will help, then go ahead and do that. All right, tech news. 
Man, we are over on time. Tech News 2016, we're actually talking about the NES Classic, uh, which is still available now. Coincidentally, I was unable to buy the NES Classic that I had been talking about because my daughter was born. The NES Classic, I will never forget the date that it came out because it was November 11th, 2016. just happened to be the same day that my daughter was born, and I was unable to go out and buy one, although I probably just would have given up on it because people went crazy and hit all the stores and bought out of all the NES Classics. Fortunately, I do have one today. Uh, we're also talking about Beats headphones. Here comes the hate mail, because I actually got a, like, a couple of hate emails on that. Not hate emails, but people were like, I love my Beats. Talk about the ridiculousness of Beat headphone, Beats headphones and how it is more of a status symbol. Uh, and of course, we are talking about the exploding Note 7. Those exploding Note 7s back in 2016 when that was a huge thing, and the, the Note 7s were exploding. Coincidentally, we've got a little galaxy story here. All right, I'm going to try to cruise through some of these things. In fact, we're just gonna wait. We're just gonna hold off on common sense segment because there's no real changes there. Uh, Spotify just launched a redesign today. I believe it just dropped today. I don't use a ton of Spotify outside of using it on my Google Home, so it doesn't. It, yeah, I don't see the things. Uh, simplified navigation, and more importantly, especially if you're a Go Tells the Wall podcast fan, highlights podcasts more, and they're easier to get to. Highlights them more, so make sure you should be subscribed wherever you get your podcasts. But if you have not listened to podcasts on Spotify, it's actually a really great place to listen to podcasts. Uh, I do a little bit of listening on there, and I know I know that we I have some friends that listen to Go Tells the Wall through Spotify, as well as some fans that uh, actually a couple fans that that emailed me and pointed out like Jesus a year and a half ago, and they were like, "Dude, you're on Spotify," and I was like, "Oh, I am. Cool, I'm on Spotify." <laughs> uh, so so check them out, especially with that redesign on on your actual Spotify app. Uh, Google has killed the uh, the movies and TV app that they have in their VR app, built into their VR app. Uh, it's not hugely used anyway, but the interesting thing is this is another step toward uh, using YouTube over Play and, and killing Google Play, which we've been talking about a bit here and there. Uh, more news from Google. Google Photos and Drive integration is ending. If you're familiar with this, if you use Google Drive, uh, this is basically... It was causing confusion for people. And I actually understand it because it caused confusion for me until I was able to sort things out. Uh, and what was happening is if you use Google Drive for storage and it senses pictures on there, it starts dropping all those pictures into your Google Photos app or your Google Photos like account that you can access from your phone, from uh, from an internet browser, whatever it might be. Uh, and this, I, I get it because it caused some serious, con not confusion, but I was like, what is happening right now? Uh, I use Google Drive as a secondary backup for Every photo I own, especially having wedding photos and kid photos and everything else, uh, they all get backed, on, on, backed up onto a hard hard drive. They all get backed up onto a cloud hard drive, and then they all get backed up. Oh, so I have a, that's like my third kind of tier or whatever. Uh, back them up all up to Google. When I first started doing that a few years ago, uh, they kept dropping them into Google Photos. And I was like, what is this? What is this? And I would back up my photos, and I would get all these notifications from Google Photos. Uh, so I get it. Just if, if you use Drive for Photos, that's going to be changing slightly. Uh, Kickstarter just announced some new transparency guidelines. If you're curious about that, Google it, look into it a little more. Uh, they're aiming to keep, cut back on crazy claims. You see a lot of people are saying, we're going to make this time machine if you only give us money on our Kickstarter and we promise to send you your very own time machine. And then a couple months later, you're like, where's my time machine, dude? So Kickstarter is kind of trying to com combat that, make it a little better, make it a little more transparent, make sure that consumers understand what they're getting and what they are contributing to. Uh, Google Pixel 4. Google Pixel 4. Some leaks came out this week. They're floating around social media. Uh, and this is what I really do appreciate. One of the times I do appreciate Google, uh, because renders were leaked this week, Google just came out with their official Twitter account like a day or so ago, and they were like, well, since everyone's so interested, here it is. And they <laughs> unveiled, like, not all the specs and everything, but they unveiled actual photos of the Google Pixel 4, which is going to be coming out in the next few months here. We all we all knew it was coming. Uh, and speaking of phones, AT&T, the, the wireless carrier, has actually canceled all their Galaxy Fold orders. See, we're talking about Galaxy Note 7's exploding, and the Galaxy Fold's not working. They canceled all of their Galaxy Fold orders uh, through AT&T. They will take orders again once the new full, the new Galaxy Fold is announced. Uh, fortunately, if you're a customer with AT&T and you did a pre-order on that, you will get a $100 credit for your canceled order, and then you'll still be able to, uh, to actually order things. Target this week announced one-day delivery. That's right, one-day delivery. Uh, currently, Target.com has over 65,000 items. 
on available for delivery. If you want to get your one-day delivery, they, they are now partnered up with a, with a startup company called Shipt. Shipt, S-H-I-P-T, Shipt. I'm not dropping those other that other S-H word. Uh, if you want to get the one-day delivery, it's going to cost you $9.99 through Shipt or you can sign up for a yearly subscription uh, plan at $99 for the year, and then you get your order shipped, any order over $35 shipped for free from Target, target target.com. A little more news from Google. Waze and Google Assistant. Waze and Google Assistant uh, will now somewhat work together. They, Google has added... Hi guys, I don't know what happened there. I don't understand what happened. My phone was doing something weird. I can't blame that one on Spectrum. Uh, sorry, everyone. Whatever WeChat is, I don't know, but I'm getting weird notifications from WeChat. Uh, anyway, Waze and Google Assistant. Google actually added some integration with Google Assistant to Waze. Uh, so coming soon, or maybe as of now, you can actually uh, you can actually give certain commands like, and I don't want to give the command because I've done this and I've gotten in trouble on it before, but you know, action word Google, report traffic and then it will give you uh, an updated traffic report. Please don't use this too much while driving. People are already ridiculous enough when it comes to driving and phones and everything else. Uh, I am gonna, I'm, you know what, I got one common sense thing for you. Uh, episode 99, we talked about a grocery store in Canada that was using bags to shame people. They were giving, they were, the plastic bags that they were using that you could pay for, uh, they were putting weird slogans on them like colon cleanse and everything else to shame people into not using plastic bags. Well, of course, because this is the frickin' world we live in, it's popular. What is this? Some... What is WeChat? Somebody help me out here. Anyway, uh, and be- of course, because people are ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous, uh, they have now gone to collecting the bag uh, because they thought it was funny. So they're collecting the plastic bags, not actually getting the point that you're supposed to be shamed into not using plastic bags. All right, like I said at the top of the show, I'm having some issues with the live feed again. And I'm not going to move internet. I am going to blame whatever. All right, we're going to finish up the show and then I'll. It should have because people are ridiculous. Over the next Twitter, uh, at Tell the Wall Pod. Uh, additionally, on O'RourkeLive.com. On that note, this has been support us. Thank you to all of you out there, Wall fans. Remember. All right, Wall fans. All right, Wall fans.